Zen 7 will be supported on AM5, or at least those are the current plans. I've seen extensive documentation over the past, yeah, it's a couple of weeks now. And I want to be very clear about this. It directly says it in documentation for Zen 7 plans. Like just, it just says on AM5 package. So this is happening at least as of now. And this was su- seemingly a recent decision because it's not just the documentation. I also talked to another source at AMD about this that has also heard this. This person said that it's kind of like Zen 3. Zen 3 originally was going to be on AM5. Uh, that was the plan, or at least whatever would have become AM5. And somewhere late in development, they said, we can make it work on AM4. We're going to make it work on AM4. It sounds like that's what's happened with Zen 7 here, where if you'll notice, actually, in most of my Zen 7 leaks, I've kind of said probably AM6, maybe AM6. It was never 100% decided, though. It just seemed over time more and more likely they would do AM6 until I guess A month or something ago, they made the decision to put it on AM5. And that means that they will be bringing 32 cores to AM5 probably in 2028. I don't have an exact date. I think this is very exciting. This means AM5 is going to have more longevity than AM4. I guess one final thing I'll say about this too, because it's coming to mind here, is I'm sure there would be a lot of people that would go, is this going to be enough bandwidth? Um, Yeah, I think it'll be fine, guys. Um... They're going to have an entirely new IO die. Think about that, too. Vcash alleviates the bandwidth bottleneck a lot of the time. If they find that DDR5 is holding back Zen 7, whatever. Give most of the line of Vcash. Delay it and give most of the line of Vcash. And there won't be an issue. I think people need to remember AMD could do that and just hasn't ever done that with any lineup because they don't feel threatened by Intel. And AMD could have launched like a Zen 3 plus all Vcash lineup against Alder Lake if they thought they needed to. They just didn't think they needed to. So, and they were right. People just bought the 5800X 3D and it, you know, and it took market share. So I, I think that's worth remembering. Another thing about DDR5 bandwidth, and this is something I feel like I have to beat into people's heads. When Zen 4 launched... And it didn't seem bandwidth bottlenecked at all. It seems like it gets almost no gains after DDR5 6200. The standard was DDR5 5600. By the time Zen 7 comes out, we will be on DDR5 about twice as fast as when Zen 4 launched. So if Zen 4 could make do with like DDR5 6000 for 16 Zen 4 cores, I don't see why 32 Zen 7 cores can't make do with DDR5 10,000 while they have Vcash on board or something. And again, a much better memory controller, low latency dies, be, bridge dies being used. I see absolutely no reason why they couldn't make 32 Zen 7 cores, which by the way, will use the A14 node. I'll confirm that too today. I already leaked that Zen 7 should use the A14 node for at least server. From what I'm seeing, they're also giving us the cutting edge node for desktop as well. They're pulling out all the stops. So that is really, really exciting. And I, I'm not worried about the bandwidth. I think it would be stupid too. Like I've seen people talk about Nova Lake having DDR5. They're like, Intel will be stuck on DDR5 forever. And it's like, that's not true. DDR6 will really not be ready if we're being honest until like 2027. And then it will be crazy expensive. Would you really want Nova Lake, for example, to be delayed till the December of 26 or mid 2027, just so it has DDR6 support? that no one wants, that no one wants to pay for? No. In reality, DDR6 is not going to be at the prices we want it until like 2028 or 2029. And I think that's the decision that Intel and AMD are also making right now with Nova Lake, Razor Lake, and Zen 7 is that they're going, yeah, look, you know, server Zen 7, some par- some server Zen 6 even will support DDR6, but the people in server will pay for that when it's really expensive. Nobody on desktop is going to want to go spend $300 on like 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM for this crap. So we might as well just wait until that's cheap enough. If the performance difference isn't that huge, we might as well just do that. So that's the, the, I just wanted to get all of that stuff out of the way about DDR5 versus DDR6. I don't see it as being a big problem at all. I think it'll be fine. Jao Fontora writes in and says, Hi, Tom. If Zen 7 is compatible with AM5, will it maintain 24 cores and 48 threads like Zen 6 or go up to 32? Maybe your question is, wait, if they're going to AM5, are they cutting the core counts? No. No. They're using two 16-core CCDs made on the cutting-edge TSMC A14 node. Nope. They're going to do it. And you're worried about DDR5 bandwidth? Already covered that. I'm not worried about the DDR5 bandwidth. My suspicion would be the 32-core. They'll say, like, Hey, if you're going to get the 32 core model of Zen 7, 
make sure that you uh, get the fastest RAM available. But I also think that's worth pointing out. Already, they easily can do 16 cores with DDR5-6000. We'll go up to 10,000, I would say, by then at least. I mean, I think you can already get that. But, I mean, most people aren't buying the 32 core. If you have the 24 core, you'll be fine with DDR5-8000. If you have the 16 core, DDR5-7, 6000 with Zen 7, we'll probably be fine. It's only the people getting the flagship 32 core without Vcash that would probably have to worry at all. And to those people, AMD will say, hey, bubs, get the fastest RAM. Or again, who knows? If AMD thinks it's a major problem, it wouldn't surprise me if the flagship Zen 7 just has dual vCache by default with no other option to alleviate that bottleneck. These are all things AMD can decide over the next three years as they lock in all the design details. And I'm not concerned about the RAM. This cutdown yield was brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Finding great candidates can be like trying to find a console code name in an AMD database, or you know, like a needle in a haystack. You get too many resumes and not enough candidates with the right skills or experience. But not with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter finds amazing candidates for you fast. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash work. And you know, if you do check it out, you will find that ZipRecruiter smart technology identifies top talent for your roles quickly. You see immediately after you post your job and ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology starts showing you qualified people right away. Also, ZipRecruiter lets you connect with top candidates as soon as possible. You can use ZipRecruiter's pre-written invite to apply message to personally reach out to your favorite candidates and encourage them to apply soon. So ditch the other hiring sites and let ZipRecruiter find what you're looking for, that needle in the haystack or that Orion code name in an AMD database. Seriously though, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. So try it out for free. And by doing so, support Moore's Law is dead for free at the exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash work. Again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash work. ZipRecruiter, the smarter way to hire.